I'm taking a stand for touch. So I think it needs a little bit of defense right now. I'm taking a stand because I know we're all getting really excited about modern technologies that help us to stay separated, where we can interact without being anywhere near the person that we're trying to communicate with. I'm taking a stand because I know we all love to avoid commuting. We all love to avoid not having to interact with colleagues and questions and interfering with our getting the job done. And it's just way more comfortable working at home. And I know we love these fancy benches that allow for so much personal space so we don't have to come anywhere near the person that's on the same bench as us. So I'm taking a stand for a touch because I think that it is something that is just essential to who we are as humans. That this is something that we do and something that we need. As social creatures, I believe that we came from other social creatures and that it's in our genetics to interact and to be with each other and to support each other that we all do better when we work as one and when we touch. See, I had a great teacher in college and, uh, and like a great teacher, she asked provoking questions. And one day in class, she asked, is love possible in America? Is love possible in a culture where we hold up the image of the individual, the person who doesn't need anybody to help them with what they're doing, the lone hero who does it all alone? Is love possible in a world that's very violent, particularly this country we live in, very violent with what we spend on our military, our prisons, with the rates of physical violence, not just out in our schools and in the outside of our country, but also in our homes, the rates of domestic violence. Is love possible when our culture is inundated with physical touch that is not good? The video games we played, again, physical touch that is not good and very violent, horrific, things we would never want to ever experience are things that we see and interact with every day. The sports that we enjoy. Or, and if it's not violent, then it's often just incredibly awkward. <laughs> Our day-to-day -day activities. So think about the experiences you have just getting to work. You know, they did a study of um, women passengers in the New York subway system a few years back. And they found that 60% of them said that they felt they'd been groped um, during their trip on the subway. 10% of them had been sexually assaulted. And this is mostly just getting to and from work in their home. And if that experience doesn't resonate for you, think about the experience you have going through the TSA, getting checked just to get on an airplane to visit your loved ones or work commitments. Or think about, imagine you're walking down the street. We often live in areas that are more and more densely concentrated, more and more strangers that we're interacting with. Think about that stranger who starts to come towards you and raises their arms up. What's your first reaction to that? What would your reaction be if they then wrapped their arms around you in a loving embrace? We have professionals that we go and see that do touch us and, and do good with that touch. But is it a comfortable experience? Something that you look forward to? Often, we pay them a little bit extra so that they numb us completely so we don't actually feel the way they're interacting with our body at all. So I decided to take a stand back then, 10 years ago. And I decided what I could do was to touch in a positive, constructive way. And so I went to massage school in California, right here. And I learned a skill which has been done for thousands of years probably back in the cave, before we had language, we were probably massaging each other. Because again, it's something that we do naturally. And I know that many of you in this room probably get massages. Because we've seen the last 10 years, the rates of massage going from 14 million in 1996 to 10 years later to 29 million people every year getting massage. So essentially doubling in 10 years. So this is something that clearly we want, clearly we enjoy. And that does us a lot of good. I think that touch is like sunlight. That is something that we absolutely need and that we can't do well without. We start to suffer really quickly. 
we know that, for example, premature babies, they do what's called kangaroo care. So premature babies, which formerly were just put in incubators and given drugs and helped um, that way to keep warm. But if you give them to their mother or father and you put them right on their skin, the skin to skin touch, and you do all the other normal things, they grow 40% more each day. And they get let out of the hospital. So all these fancy drugs that we have, which are great, do not compare to simple touch. We know that this soldier right here, and many soldiers just like this one, are going to need a lot of help to, to survive. And not just medicine, but they're going to need touch. We know that touch is going to help this soldier re heal from their physical wounds faster. And we know that touch is going to help them heal from their mental and spiritual wounds faster as well. That if we uh, apply touch into traditional treatments for PTSD, within a few short sessions, they're no longer considered having PTSD and can be integrated. So it's something that we need to do. And I didn't need to tell this to his partner right there who's holding his hand because that's something that I think he's just instinctively doing. So we know that there's a lot of other things that are absolutely wonderful about touch. For bonding, for example, that the bonding that a mother and child do, there's a chemical release called oxytocin. And oxytocin is a wonderful thing. It helps us feel really good. It helps to deplete our stress hormones and make us feel connected. So it's not just the body warmth, but it's actually a bonding that happens when a mother and child touch. And there's a bonding that happens when you and your partner and you and your friends and family touch as well. So a little tip, if you want to get someone to do something for you, I would suggest giving them a little bit of massage first. <laughs> we know that touch is crucial for communication. And who has heard that communication is important for relationships, <laughs> right? OK. So we know that communication is important for relationships. We also know that 13% of our communication, or roughly 13%, is, is actually verbal communication. So if we're trying to understand somebody just from listening to them, we're probably not going to do so well. I know that with my, uh, with my partner, that when we're fighting, I find that if I connect with her, all of a sudden we're not having an argument, we're having a conversation. So touch the person that you're trying to connect with. And not just um, touch, but through touch, we cannot simply hear what they're saying, but we can actually feel what they mean by what they're saying. That as they study this, they learn that there are eight distinct emotions that we can experience simply through touch. So absolutely crucial for our ability to communicate. And in community, because we aren't those lone heroes who can do everything by ourselves. We know that through touch, these simple gestures, like a hand on a shoulder, convey so much more. Students who have been touched by their teacher raise their hands twice as often to answer questions and participate. We know that through touch, we help to cross boundaries that need not exist. We help to feel a part of something bigger than ourselves, a part of a community. As we touch somebody, we say that you and I are together. So absolutely crucial. And that we can't do things alone. We need each other. We are social animals. And that we do so much more and so much bigger things when we actually interact and when we actually touch. So 10 years ago, I took a stand for touch. And here I am again today. I'm taking a stand for touch. And I'm committing myself to taking every opportunity I have to touch my family and friends and people that I meet. Maybe I'll even take that middle seat on the, the plane next time <laughs> and squeeze myself in between two perfectly normal strangers that probably, just like me, need a little bit of extra touch in their life. And I invite you all to take a stand for touch with me. <laughs>